welcome to the fourth episode of the Fab Lab 101. Uh, Dave, you can feel free to unmute yourself or chime in whenever you have something you want to say to add to what I'm talking about. Um, I feel like there's a light shining behind my head. Let me sit up a little bit. <laughs> kind of looks like I'm divine. <laughs> anyway, so my name is Chris Kaminsky, and this is the fourth episode of the Fab Lab 101 series, designed to be 20, 30 minute quick videos to kind of introduce you to software and um, equipment and the capabilities. So tonight we're going to talk about the ShopBot CNC router, which is um, good for cutting wood, like wood signs or, you know, plastic or um, even aluminum, which we wouldn't really do unless uh, <laughs> we researched it a lot. But you can cut a lot of different types of um, materials, including like foam even, um, using the machine. Obviously, wood is very common. So I always think it's a good idea to kind of start out showing what you can actually do, <clears throat> what you can do with it. Where's my examples? There we go. All right, so these are just some examples, so like a six pack holder um, for like a wedding gift or something. You know, people love wood stuff like this. Uh, cuts flat on the router. You have to lay it flat like that. Uh, you can make furniture, so like a cool, you know, bookcase like this. Uh, this is a contour map that I did. Painting it, making it look all nice. And then there, we've got foam Chris, tombstones. All we're getting is, all we're getting is a web page. Oh. We're not getting, we're, or I'm sorry, not a web page. Your uh, file manager, the big pictures aren't coming up. All right. We'll do this. See, that's why I didn't have somebody else in here. Now, can, now you can see it. Now, can you see it? Yes. Cool. All right, so six pack holder like this, uh, cut out of some pine or cedar, uh, you know, nice wedding gift, laid flat like that. Uh, furniture like this bookshelf, shaped like rockets, pretty cool. A contour map sign, some nice home decor. Uh, some tombstones for Halloween, we're done on a foam. Those look pretty neat. Some shelving, um, some signs, you know, just handcrafted wood uh, things. Furniture, my furniture, that's, that's very common. Um, that thing just looks cool. Signs, yeah, so just tons of possibilities. Carvings like this uh, are very intricate. We really don't get into that because it would take, you know, something like that would take too long to do um, at the Fab Lab. Cutlery boards, you put like meat and cheeses on it. Those are pretty cool. There you go. There's an action shot right there. Getting hungry just looking at it. Um, yeah, so there's a ton of examples. And there's some cool sites where you can download free plans. So let me stop share. And I'll share. I never know if it's switching over, so I always just like stop and auto share. So like this website called Open Desk, it looks like some of the furniture was back the plans because they had taken them down for a little while but you can just download these and make all this um using a machine like a cnc router they give you all the plans for it basically they tell you what you need and everything so it's pretty cool um vetric they have their own free monthly projects on their software website uh also shopbot has their own cnc projects that you can sort through and find ideas to get inspired uh, those are pretty cool because they tell you literally the size wood you need and everything. Um, yeah, so today the, with the uh, ShopBot, it's this guy right here. So we have a big 4 by 8 ShopBot at the Fab Lab. <clears throat> and it, uh, like I said here, cuts all this material. And this I'll put this in the Fab Lab 101 website. This document will be linked there. And so to use the router you use what's called a vector file oftentimes. And we'll create a vector file today using the uh, VCarve program. And you can do, you could create them in Adobe Illustrator, you could create them in Corel Draw. Um, lots, of, lots of ways to create vector files. Uh, let's see, a couple different software. So we use ShopBot, VCarve for ShopBot. Um, it's, a, called, it's by a company called Vectric. Vectric. <clears throat> they make other software but these are on the fab lab pcs 
Uh, SolidWorks also has the capability to design and run CNC path paths. And then Fusion 360, which I'll demonstrate real quick today, uh, this is also free. Um, and Onchip's good for designing, and I'll show that today, but it's, it doesn't necessarily have any free CNC control software. There might be some add-ons out there by now, but nothing I've researched. So just some terminology here, you know, your, your speeds and your feeds are important when you're doing CNC stuff. Uh, you know, you're not gonna use the same settings as you would on a piece of foam as you would, you know, like a block of cedar or pine, right? It's gonna be completely different. So you have to get used to looking up tool, look at, you know, it's based on your tool, it's based on what you're cutting and you can, um, find a lot of that stuff online. Like it's pretty standard. Like if you want to cut pine, it's going to tell you these are the ranges and yada, yada, yada. So just got to get a research a little bit ahead of time or you'll burn material or cause chip out on material. Um, <clears throat> so you use end mills with the router and a lot of them have, uh, well, they have flutes. Uh, that's easy to see in this picture. So the flute is kind of the cutting part of the, um, the end mill. So like you have an upcut bit and a downcut bit and a compression bit. And you can have two flute, one flute, four flute, uh, all, kinds, all kinds of different flutes. Uh, the, and here you go, the upcut, those are used, <coughs> sorry, those, those like do exactly what it says. It pulls the chips from the board. Uh, if you have a down cut, that pushes stuff down. So if you have like a one side laminate sheet and your let's say your laminate's on top, you don't have laminate on the bottom, you would use a down cut bit there because otherwise you're gonna get like chips from the laminate. And then if you have like a two ply laminate, like you know, if you're making like a really nice arcade cabinet, which somebody has done at the Fab Lab, that's when you would use a compression bit. And compression bits just take a it's just a small little um you have to just keep in mind your first cut depth when you do the compression bit. And they'll, they'll, they'll basically tell you when you get the compression bit what that cut depth should be. Then you also have ball nose and V-groove and surfacing and a ton of other ones, right? Um, we use a lot of times just typical flat end mills, uh, ball nose, uh, v, v carters are very common for engraving. Uh, and then also we'll use the fly cutter to, you know, take out a bunch of material or level our spoil board. Let's see. Um, our, at the Fab Lab, we have a jig set up, so it makes it really easy. I won't go too much into this, but there's multiple ways to hold down your material. So if you put like a giant four by eight sheet on there and you want to cut parts out like you would for, you know, a cornhole game or something like that, or that six pack holder, then you're gonna need to hold it down. So you can do that with clamps, you can do that with screws, or you can do it with the composite. We have a nail gun that shoots composite um, plastic uh, nails into the spoil board. So if you hit it, uh, it doesn't do anything. Whereas if you hit like a clamp or you hit a bolt, you know, you're going to break a bit and it's not going to be good. So we try to simplify uh, things by setting up a jig when we're doing like sign classes and stuff. So a lot of this is from a class we do and this, I'll put this link up there, but these steps are basically kind of like what I'm going to be following today um, to create just basic layout signs in V carve. So I won't go into that. We'll go right into the uh, software now. Make sure I'm sharing the right screen. V-carve, boom. All right. So V-carve, let's see, everyone in a meeting. So V-carve, when you start up a new document, this is kind of what it, what it looks like. So if I want to change, let's say I know what kind of board I'm going to use, you know, so this is my job setup. So if I'm going to do a 24 inch by 12 inch board, that's three quarters thick, I set that up here. Most of the time you always do material surface versus the machine bed. Um, not, not entirely sure why that's what we just, this is what we do. Let's see. 
it like just lagged real quick. That's weird. Hopefully my mouse isn't dying. So uh, in the program here, you have a bunch of these like creative like vector tools. So you can add shapes, we can do text, you know, you could do circles and boxes and all kinds of fun stuff. So let's just say we're going to just make a simple box sign like we're going to put out in front of the Fab Lab. We want to let people know that we're what we are. So I just click and draw. I can adjust it manually here if I want to. Um, we're not going to do too much with trying to make everything look super pretty. I might have put two there. Yeah, I accidentally made two vectors. All right, so basically we need to start with a border. So let's say we're going to cut this out of a bigger piece of wood. So what I've just drawn would be kind of like, we'll call it the profile cutout path. So now let's add kind of a border inside of our piece. And this is more for decoration, so boom. All right, so we need to add some text in this sucker. So let's do some draw text. Let's say Fab Lab, we're open. Which we're not, but when we are open, <laughs> we could have a sign like this out front. There we go. So it didn't, yeah, it just had whatever text it was. So I can actually edit it. So if I click on the text and go back and click on my T, um, this will be different because not you can't, not everybody will have V carves. So you might not necessarily use a program like this to design at home. Uh, I'll show you how, after I run through this, how you could design something at home and then come to Fab Lab and use this software. So let's click on it. We'll just change it to more of a bolder font that's easy to read. We'll click apply. There we go. Okay, so we have some text. It's not centered or anything. That's fine. Make it nice and big. So we want to draw some uh, attention to it. So we're just going to add some stars, right? We'll just put some random stars in here, different sizes, so that everybody can have their eyes drawn to it. <laughs> Make sure nothing's overlapping like this. The cool thing about this program is you can actually import your vector or an image from you know Google or something and actually trace it. Okay, so we have our shape started to be created. We have some text, we have a border. Now we gotta do is add some tool pathing. So over here on the right side of this of uh, VCarve, there's a toolpath option. I can look, pin this guy here so it doesn't disappear all the time. And all these operations on the right side here are your different operations for um, running tools. So we have a profile toolpath, a pocket toolpath, <clears throat> a drilling toolpath, like if you had to do like a bunch of holes, a hole pattern, uh, quick engraving, inlay. Inlays are pretty cool. Uh, Google those and you can see, like you could do like inlaid letters. Um, so if you had like, like a lighter wood and like a dark walnut or something, you could make it so like the lighter wood is the backer and the walnut would be like your text or something. So it really pops, it's pretty cool. And then you also have um, a V carve here. So there's a bunch of other paths here that necessarily aren't for beginners. So we most, if you're doing signs like this, you're mostly gonna use profiles, pockets, V carve, right? That's mostly what you'll be doing. So let's first do our text. So we're going to use what's called a V-bit in order to do our text and our symbols. So I'm just gonna hold shift and select everything that I want to do in that path, in this one tool operation. All right, so let's go and let's click V-carve. So now it's gonna ask me, all right, what's your start depth? What's your flat depth? Uh, what kind of bit are you gonna use? And then I can rename it. So let's say we're going to do a flat depth. You can kind of see it's really small here, but um, your start depth is how deep it'll go down before it actually starts cutting from the top of your piece. So if you had that at like, if you have a one inch piece, let's say, and you set that to a quarter, that means it's not even going to start um, doing the letters basically until like that quarter of an inch down or half inch, whatever you set that to. Uh, typically, you just set that at zero. <laughs> for just basic words and signs like this. Um, the flat depth, that's basically the depth of your your carvings that you're gonna do, and you'll see that in a second. We'll just do 0.3, because that seems reasonable for uh, 
three quarter inch thick board. And then our tool here. So we can click on here and we can select from a library of tools, you know, a lot of preset ones from, from ShopBot, but we're gonna do this uh, 60 degree V-bit. So if I had to come in here and change any of these parameters, depending on you know what material I'm cutting. I could slow it down, change the spindle speed, I could change the plunge rate, feed rate, all that stuff based on what material I'm using and what cutter I'm using. Oh, this is pretty important too. So a good rule of thumb is your pass depth. So that's like how much you're, how much you're cutting in the Z uh, should be like half or less than your diameter of your, your tool. So this is a quarter inch V-bit, pretty small guy. So the maximum that we're gonna go down at any given pass is 0.125. So if we were cutting, let's say we're cutting, instead of 0.3, we're cutting a quarter of inch flat depth. So at this pass depth, it would take two passes. If I make that pass depth you know, any smaller, then it's just gonna create more passes than that. But that's important. Otherwise, you can break your tool if you go trying to take too many, uh, too much material out. Break your tool, burn your material up. Just not good. <laughs> so click OK. So we can just leave this V carve uh, one. Typically, what we'll do is, you know, I'll add V sixty, and then maybe like one quarter on there, so that when I save this tool path as a G code and I go back later to run the machine, I save it on a flash drive. As long as I name what bit I'm using in there in the name, then I'll be like, oh yeah, I need a quarter inch uh, V60 bit. So click calculate. Look at that, I'm starting to make a sign. So I'm gonna preview selected toolpath is the only one we have. And there you go. I'm starting to see uh, our sign come together. Now I can actually reset the preview and let's say I go back and I just, edit this guy let's edit this and let's make this like 0.7 and our piece is 0.65 let's recalculate preview all two paths Does that go down all the way yeah so and you can go too far so if i made that you know let's say we start at 0.5 recalculate this guy See, it's yelling at me that it's going to cut through now because I set my start up too high. Sometimes it's nice to break things so that you can see what not to do. So that would, that's kind of why it'd be important to not do a start up um, that deep in this, this example. So let's go back and edit that, get rid of that. Point three, reset preview. It's cool because it gives you a 3D preview of this. Uh, you can even change the wood and stuff depending on what you're gonna do. So we have some more tool paths to add. So let's go back to 2D view. So in VCarve, you always gotta switch back and forth between 2D and 3D. It takes some getting used to when you're first starting out using it. Um, Cause you'll be in 3D like, but where's the tools? Where's the tool paths? Or where's the vectors? And you're like, oh yeah, it's right there. So we have a couple more tool paths. So we actually have this path that we can do a nice VCarve to as well. Um, but we're not gonna do a, we're not gonna do a, uh, V carve engraving toolpath here because it's not going to do what we want. All we want to do is have it profile and follow this box around. So we're just going to do a profile and we don't want to cut to 0.8. We want to go and just do like maybe 0.25, right? Or 0.3. We can just keep everything the same as inside and see what that looks like. So it says tools a half inch straight right now. We're going to change that. We'll do that 60 degree V bit. That looks good. Click OK. <clears throat> we want to do our machine vector on it. So if you can kind of see the little ball changes. So if I pick that vector, um, you can kind of see it's going to follow the outside of the path. Uh, this would be more, you know, for this border, it wouldn't care. But for other stuff, you could accidentally go on the inside of a path or the outside of a path when you didn't really want to. So you just got to pay attention to that. Uh, we don't need to do tabs right yet. We'll do that in the next step when we go to cut this piece out of our, our bigger board. But now we can just rename this guy. So we'll do the profile and we'll just do V60, whoops, V60 
dash one dash four for one quarter. And I might just put like text on here or not text is the border. Sorry. Calculate. All right. So preview all to a pass. Boom. Look at that. Starting to look pretty sharp right there. So go back and let's do a cutout tool path on here. Close this window right here. So now we have two tool paths. We're going to do a cutout profile tool path. And this one, we're going to cut through our material. So our material is 0.75, you know, so I might say let's do 0.78 because we, we know that'll cut through um, and go into our spoil board more than likely, which is fine. And we definitely don't want to do it with a 60 degree V bit. We want to just, we want to haul. So we're just going to do a half inch end mill. You know, we can cut a quarter of inch each time. This is only going to take three passes. So we're going to be able to actually be four because it's just slightly over. But we're going to be able to haul. We're going to do on. This one we do have to have tabs. So I'm going to do this without. Let's see, EM, um, one half. I'm going to do this without tabs real quick to show you what it, what it does. So now it's gonna yell at me and say, yeah, you're cutting through. It's what we want, cool. Reset preview, preview all two paths. All right, so we cut the material, the sign out of the, the bigger board that we had. But the problem would be, is this sign's gonna jiggle all over the place uh, because nothing's holding it down. So unless you have a vacuum table or you use some like tape on the back end, you have to add what's called tabs on this thing. So let's go back and edit this tool path. Okay, down here we'll click on add tabs. We can change our length, we can change our thickness. You know, that depends on um, your material. If you're doing, you know, three quarter inch plywood or one inch, you know, anything super thick, you might have to beef this, this up, uh, the thickness, or you'll have, they'll be too thin and it will just shear right off. So we're gonna go edit tabs. And we're gonna click, you know, let's say, let's do two on each corner or each side. That should be enough. Let's kind of do that. Boom, boom. Now, if I accidentally added one like right here or something, I could actually come back and just click on it and it would go away. Boom. All right. So calculate again. Yes, that's fine. Reset preview, preview all tool paths. So you can see what the t adding the tabs did. So afterwards, we take this off and we'd have to do a little bit of cleanup to get these off some sanding and, you know, cut these guys with like a handsaw or something, but necessary. You know, if I was going to hold this piece down, uh, th this board or whatever, I would probably use those uh, composite screws like in the corners. You know, I might honestly make the sign smaller or find a bigger piece of wood so that I had a little more meat on the edges to hold it down. So that's how to create a sign, basic, a basic sign inside VCarve, which is, it's great because it's super simple. Other programs, like I'll show you a fusion, it's free, you can do it. It's just not, like this is, this is software is specific for this industry, it's really nice. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of the other bells and whistles to it. Just simple, you know, 2D vectors, let's see. So this, not this program. So this is called Gravit. So this is like a vector program like Corel Draw is, or uh, Adobe Illustrator, Inkscape, a lot of those other ones. So Gravit's free. I like it. I've been increasingly like it because it's web-based. Um, so if I wanted to, let's hide this guy. So I threw this, you know, sign together. I can create text in here. You know, I could, I even added the shapes with the stars here. Now this tool path, I could, um, I could export this vector and put it right into uh, VCarve down here. I'll show you that real quick. It's, this program is, it's different than other um, vector programs. So like when you wanna export something, you have to create slices, it's called. And then down here I can exit, or, or uh, I can export it as a SVG. You can do image files, SVG, or PDF. You're probably gonna do SVG or PDF when you're gonna import it into other programs that are vector programs. So I'll try SVG. There we go, it downloaded. So let's go back to 
vcarve. Up top here, there's an import bitmap and an import vectors. So we're gonna import a vector because that's what that one is. So we'll find that right there, the vector slice. Uh oh, <laughs> didn't like the text, but it, it actually imported the, uh, the rest of it. I'm not sure why that did it, but you know, I could add text in here if I really wanted to, so. Chris, look in levels. Where's the levels at in this guy? Right up at the top, right straight at the top of the screen, right next to the tabs. Right here? Okay, I just wondered if sometimes they'll import things on different levels. It did not. So it did, it did miss your text. I almost wonder. Huh, weird. Maybe a PDF would work. Let's try this. It's not a big deal. If it doesn't work, it just goes, it's just another tool. There we go. PDF worked for some reason. So I've noticed that SVGs can be kind of hokey sometimes. I'm not sure why they break a lot, but a lot of times I end up having to do more work to fix them than, than it's worth. So now I have a vector file and you can see all these are um, lines. I might have to delete some of this extra stuff that borders it brought with it, but there we go. You know, if I click on these and they look like they're complete, that's good. There's uh, tools over here on the left inside VCarve where you can repair. Like if it's a broken, a broken curve. So that's kind of nice, but a lot of these seem like they worked out pretty good. So yeah, now I could just add tool pass to this and um, everything would be hunky dory. <laughs> I could also take this. Um, so I took an image from here and I imported it into Onshape. So if I wanted to have this thing in 3D, right? I, and I could just basically trace it. So Onshape doesn't import vectors really nicely like um, VCarve does. So what I did is I imported it as an image in here and I'm basically just recreating it based on the image. So, but Onshape's a good program to design if you wanna do um, some basic CAD for designing the signs and stuff like that. Let's see, the other thing I had was Fusion. Okay, so, oh yeah, you would want to do that on the, on the outside. That's true. <laughs> that actually would probably, um, oh yeah, it's a private message. <laughs> yeah, make, just make sure you're changing your uh, inside, outside, or on, depending on the operation you're doing. So Dave mentioned changing the toolpath to outside um, when I was doing that first time. So Fusion, here's our design. Our design. This is the, uh, the 3D model of it. You can see the different sections of this sign. And I actually have, it actually has a uh, manufacturer mode in it too. This I've only played around with a little bit. We've done, I've done like one thing on our router, but you can actually see the toolpaths here. And I could simulate an engrave or you know, follow the contour. So let's go simulate. I can actually run through it to see if it's gonna, you know, where the tool's gonna go, if it's gonna hit any fixtures that I have. And Fusion is free. Anybody can download Fusion for personal use, hobbyist use, um, you know, even a startup use if you're not making a certain amount of money or something like that. So, and it's not that expensive to buy a professional version of, of Fusion. Anyways, I think it's like 500 bucks now. I must have the preview turned off. <laughs> or I just have the depth really low. <laughs> but yeah, you can, you can generate tool paths inside uh, Fusion, which is pretty cool. So you could do your design completely in Fusion. You could do it using um, vector programs. Sometimes a little bit of both, you know, I might use CAD like um, Fusion and Onshape maybe to design like, you know, maybe like a unique border shape, like a profile. And then I might use a vector program for more of the uh, artsy, that was weird, there's like a fan that popped up in this view. <laughs> um, 
for the more artsy fartsy type stuff. So if I go and let's see if I, I'll show you how to import an image real quick into VCarve as kind of like the last, the last stuff. So I'm going to get a Husky. So let's look up Husky clip art, black and white. <laughs> Cause I want to try to make it pretty easy for the uh, CNC or the, the VCar program. There you go. That looks like a pretty good one. I want to make it pretty easy for the program to um, be able to vectorize it. Yeah, I like that one. So let's save this guy. Not a lot going on, so it should work out pretty good. Okay, so we're back in our sign. Let's go import this bitmap. There we go. It's, it's tiny, but we'll just trace it first before I worry about scaling it. I always have to like look for it real quick. I always like forget where it's at. <laughs> Trace bitmap right there. So it's black and white. So if you had multiple colors, you know, you could do colors and it would make different zones. You could, you know, have it ignore certain shades, but we'll just do black and white. And I'll do a th threshold. Actually, in the middle is pretty good. Group vectors. Let's do preview. Look at that. So basically what it's doing is it's taking the pixelated JPEG or PNG that we find and it's creating a path, a line basically best fit to that image. So you can see how blocky and pixelated it is and it just like best fits a line. It does a really good job actually. Vcurve does a good job for tracing vectors. Let's see. So I can Let's move that. up to the levels again and turn off the the bitmap image. Okay. The very top one. That one. Oh, no, the light bulb. Light bulb. There you go. I haven't played around with the images too much. Usually I end up just deleting it. <laughs> there we go. So we can add some text. Husky zone. <laughs> now, if this uh, was really going to be made, I might make it out of titanium because they like to chew on everything. So, <laughs> uh, the other thing too that so I could V carve this text. I'll show you real quick a different operation that you could do. So we could just do a a, a profile. So it's not, we're not doing a cutout. Let's just go a quarter inch down. We'll do a V bit so we can still get that nice kind of cool look. Let's see. That's good. I'm not going to worry about naming it right now. What does that? Oh, I don't think I chose a vector. It does not like... You have an apostrophe in the, the cut-up field. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. There we go. Oh, that's not right. Reset. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it has all my other tool paths, so I can delete those. <laughs> delete. Delete this. Delete this. Reset preview. So this time we took a V-bit and we just kind of followed the profile. Still has kind of a cool look, but it doesn't actually go down as deep. This would be like uh, way quicker to cut than if you did like some serious V carving because just following the lines. I don't know what this guy is going to do. You're going to you, do better if you profile that at about a half an inch or a quarter, I'm sorry, an eighth of an inch. Okay, profile that's, it at an eighth of an inch. I was thinking, for, uh, yeah, I was thinking that'd be the best way to go. Go calculate, reset preview, preview all too fast. Look at that. I want to make this so bad. <laughs> so yeah, that's basic sign making with the Fab Lab.